Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of the fourth Alien film, Alien Resurrection, which is the last of the quadology, the original Alien quadology, and yeah, and the last Alien film before Alien vs Predator. So, Resurrection, it's also the latest in the timeline, the last install, uh, the furthest in the few, uh, timeline. Uh, chronological or events. So, Resurrection is about uh, some scientists cloning Ripley and the alien queen inside her and hoping to breed new aliens. However, the aliens have escaped and now they're basically running amok. So, Ripley and the crew of the ship that brought the humans for the aliens breedings, even though they didn't know what they were actually for, uh, have to try and escape. Meanwhile the ship is on its way back to Earth, so if the aliens get to Earth then all is lost. Although in the alternative version, in the special edition version, the uh, planet is a bit more of a wasteland, whilst in the theatrical cut it's normal. So, Alien Resurrection. It's good. Well, it's, it's not it's not Aliens, it's not that good, and it's not as not even as good as Alien 3. As a film, maybe not even as much as the first one, although I do prefer it to the first one. But, hmm, it's a bit of a strange one, really, because they're cloning Ripley, and it's basically just trying to get off the ship uh, without dying, and it is a bit of a struggle for survival. But it's good, it's entertaining, it's got some good moments. Uh, a couple of good characters, some of them I prefer from the third film and maybe even the first film, but I don't think they're as good as the seconds. I do think as the film goes on, the ones who are still alive at that point are developing until we get to the end where they've... Uh, well, certainly with Ron Perlman's character, he's a bit different to how he was earlier on in the film. And... Also, Renoda Ryder's character goes through a bit of a change, and she gets a second billing in the film. Makes sense. She, this character is quite, a, in, uh, I wouldn't say important, but definitely all over the film. I think she was supposed to be an important character. Maybe it was just the fact that Renoda uh, Ryder was playing her. I'm not sure, but she's definitely somehow a very focused on character and a very Notable, noticeable one. Fun fact, she's actually a robot. Hmm. A uh, robot who can feel emotions and was one created by robots. There's a lot of talking about it. Uh, certainly in the special edition version. The special edition version actually adds a couple bit more stuff that I think were rightfully removed, again, like with the first uh, film. And the alternative titles and the end scene I think the first film did that, the, not the first film, the f theatrical cuts did those better, I think. In the theatrical cut you've got the uh, shots of the different versions of the clones of Ripley, but without showing that they're uh, versions of the clones until we get later on in the film. And the end scene is them just flying over the planets just before they land. Uh, the special edition Alternative versions have titles of a zoom out from a bug whose teeth are made to look like an alien, a xenomorph, and some guy in the big ship, and then an even longer and wider pan of the ship with different positioned titles. And you know, it kind of drags on a little bit, so I prefer the theatrical cut version. And the uh, end scene. There's an extra scene at the end, an alternative ending, where they arrive on the pla- they cut anything that remotely looks like a nice uh, planet Earth, and instead land on the planet on a, in a pretty much in a desolate wasteland, in a way. Hmm, overlooking Paris, or what was Paris. Which is strange, because they were heading towards North America in the, in the zoo flying in clip. And... In the other, in the theatrical cut, it looked like they were flying over Japan. Or at least that, that's what I thought it was. It might have been part of North America. Anyway, cast-wise, I think Sigourney Weaver gives her 
Well, I wouldn't say, you know, best performance. I think that was Nadine's, but I think it's a improvement on the last film. It, although I think she has done a fantastic job throughout this series. I think her weakest performance may have been in the first one, then three, then here, then two. Um, so I think she does an amazing job. Renaud Ryder is also very good as her character, and she does a good job. Ron Perlman is also very good as his character. I like the other actors in their roles. I can't really remember anyone else, uh, actor-wise. Uh, characters, there's uh, this disabled guy. There's a black guy with very long hair, who's really awesome. There's another. There's the only other female member of the crew besides Renaud Ryder's character, uh, the delivery crew. There's their leader, who is axed off. Relatively early, considering how when they when people start dying, he's axed off shortly after that, that start has starts happening. There's this Dick who's in charge of the science division. There's one of the soldiers who managed not to get killed, and plus a couple more soldiers. There's a scientist who gets dragged down into the aliens ship. There's quite a f not ship there. Uh, Place. There's quite a few other scientists and soldiers, and this guy running the place who gets himself killed. The production looks well, showing us a, a nice design of a ship, and the uh, aliens look pretty good. Although they look a bit more, uh, I'm not sure, fleshy. I'm not sure. It's there's a new kind of fleshy design on this one. Uh, these aliens. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the fact that the alien queen is a clone of the. The one from Alien 3. So they're technically alien clones, uh, in a way. They are, eh, but they're still pretty formidable. And they look really cool swimming underwater. Not to mention, they look pretty cool swimming underwater. And they managed to, when they managed to capture one of the, uh, capture the uh, other female member of the crew that isn't, uh, what's her name? That isn't. Uh, Renaud Ryder's character, though when she is, sh uh, Renaud Ryder is shot by Dickhead in charge of the science division. He, uh, he shoots her, and she falls into the water, and the alien ignores her. And also, Longhead guy basically chop uh, lets himself fall into the water, and he's never seen again. Presumes dead, even though the alien had grabbing onto his foot is dead. Why didn't he just kick the alien off his okay, alien hand off his foot? I don't know. And yeah, that guy could have survived or died another way, a less stupid way, in a way, <laughs> um, or been kidnapped. At least something better than what we did have. And I did another thing is why are the aliens chasing them underwater when they're going into a trap? At least, okay, fair enough, chase them into the trap, but it captures one of them captures that woman I mentioned. Why did they do that if they needed them to swim to the eggs? And I can understand lacing the uh, the top of the pool with this kind of weird cotton thing that they have to burst through. They have to cut themselves through, but and that then leads them to being t uh, having face huggers on their faces if they are not careful. But why are the aliens kidnapping them underwater when they're supposed to be pushing them towards a trap? That's the worst piece of logic in the film. Uh, argue that myself. And one thing I liked was the scene where we saw Ripley's other clones, and she, uh, Clone Eight, has to basically get rid of all of them and destroy all the evidence. And it is pretty much an emotional scene for all, uh, her, as well as well as also in the special edition version, the uh, deleted scene from the theatrical cut. Where she sees a clip of a, not a clip, a picture of a young girl, and she's sort of reminded of Newt, in a way. I think she also made, mentions her later on, certainly in the special edition. And yeah, I think so. Although not by name, but not, and it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, or rather the baby-faced human-alien hybrid monster creature you can actually see on the cover of the 
six film DVD and Blu-ray box set here, just above the one from Prometheus. And um, okay, what is that supposed to be? I know they're trying to have a kind of a human and alien hybrid creature that the alien queen has to give birth after it, it during a second cycle with a human womb, but goodness, it looks a bit. It looks a bit stupid. It looks. A bit, it would have been better if they just completely avoided that. I mean, it makes sense why it's there. It makes sense why it was born and how. But I think it should have just been removed. I don't think it was that necessary. Just have maybe a super, maybe a human with alien abilities. Like Ripley, ha uh, Clone 8 has some alien abilities, but she's still human. And have that alien fight towards the end. Although, again, it seems like they're bringing this new creature in a bit too late into the film. Maybe it should have happened a bit earlier on. And it pops up quite a bit often. <laughs> uh, like... Say the first, like the alien in the first film, how that pretty much popped up halfway through, it was born halfway through, and then was a problem for the rest of the film. So, something like that in a way, and also the ones from the second film. So, something a bit, maybe a bit earlier on, not necessarily halfway through, but certainly sooner in the film. This one just feels like the start of, it's just here for Act 3, rather than a big bad for the second half of the film which would give it more screen time. It does also kind of conflict itself between whether it's a, it should it kills like a normal alien, like when it kills the surviving guard who just got lucky for this story until that point. And actually kind of, and also the scientist and the alien queen. But at the same time, it doesn't kill Renaud Ryder's character straight away and it's also looking up to Ripley, like, uh, as the scientist person says, Ah, oh, I think you, you're its mummy. <laughs> well, technically, even though technically shouldn't she be uh, uh, the creature's grandmother, as the queen gave birth to the creature, and the queen's technically Ripley's baby, in a way. Uh, so just, uh, in a way of speaking, but still. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, I think it would have been better if the creature had a bit more of a... Maybe if it talked. Actually, that might have been stupid. Uh, it's just a pretty daft idea, off in a way. But it, at least it could, have, it could have at least shown some more complex on whether it should kill or not. Whether it should follow its alien instincts or be a bit more human. And then eventually it does start to go towards the more alien instincts, which then leads to Ripley having to kill it. Kill it. I will say though, the creature's death is pretty uh, cool looking, how uh, gruesome it is being sucked out of the window and into the vacuum space, tearing its blood, limbs, uh, organs and bones until it's just a skull and cr uh, cracking as it goes through the glass and into space. If there was a fifth film, I wouldn't be surprised if they used the body or... Uh, sorry, the skeletons of that alien to create a new breed. <laughs> to be honest, I'm glad that didn't happen. But an Alien Five, well, a resurrection sequel would have would have been okay. Would have been good. They chose to make Alien vs Predator instead, which, in my opinion, before the rewatches, um, is my least favourite of all twelve. Well, eleven at the moment. All eleven Alien and Predator films. Um, 12 if we include Predators, but I, ex I expect I'll like that more than AVP 1. I even like AV AVP Requiem more than the first one. Uh, more for the fact that more stuff gets done, rather, and it's a bit more enjoyable than just a boring crossover, in a way, sadly. But more on that when we get to that film, which in Alien film terms will be next, but there'll be a few films in between. Uh, well, I'm hoping to do some anyway. But anyway, Resurrection, I thought it was uh, good fun, I thought it was alright, entertaining. Um, strange, I thought this one was a bit more violent on the last time, I think that might be on the theatrical cut. Same for Alien 3, I think 3 was the most violent in the theatrical cut, maybe, I'm not sure. 
And I'm not sure which one's the most violent now. I think they're all very similar, apart from maybe the first one. Um, not as much as the other three, but still. Uh, never mind. So overall, I'm going to give Alien Resurrection an 8 out of 10. Same score as the first one, but personally I think I enjoy it more. As a film, I think one may have been handled better for the most part, but I think as an enjoyment, I enjoyed this one more. Also, the music is very good in this film, and I think uh, it's nice to hear the theme from the first two films back. The um, one I mentioned was missing from the last one, and also some more cues from the previous films were used in its own music. Each film seems to have its own composer, and I would also say the same for the Predator and ADP films, with the exception of the Return of Alan Silvestri in, in Predator 2, but besides that, each one, besides the first two Predator films sharing a composer, each Alien and Predator film and AVP film have different composers for some reason. Um, and to be honest, each film seems to have a different director apart from Ridley Scott returning for the prequel. Alien films. Also, I have to mention the CGI in this film, I think, was handled a bit better than the last film. Uh, so, uh, in yes, I think it was, for the most part, better than in the first film. The, there wasn't really much CG in the previous two, but visual effects did look pretty good in those ones. I think the CG will improve in later ones, certainly by the time we get to Covenant, there'll be some very good CG uh, aliens and also some not so good ones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mind. And yeah, so that's resurrection. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>